Stop my conquering Mega Eagle! <laughs> hey, freaks! Okay, so I was hoping to be getting on with the crane at the minute, um, but I'm waiting, waiting on parts from a big chop saw, um, so I can't really do the structure of the crane, and that, that has to come before anything else. Um, so in the meantime, uh, something that I will need later on, because I've got a, a cunning plan for making pulleys and stuff, is um, uh, this bead roller, and we're going to have to modify it a bit, yeah? Let me show you. Okay, so this is my, my Jenny, or bead roller, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's basically a uh, metal forming metal forming tool. Uh, I have used it in one of my other videos when I was making a uh, luggage rack for a cargo bicycle. Um, we got a, a set of rollers on here at the minute, and I'll just show you on this aluminium what it does. Um, Um, two two counter rotating shafts here, and we can slide a bit of metal through the middle. And oh, okay, you do have to be a little bit careful with it. This is this is old aluminium, just a sheet of old scrap, and we've actually because um, it's old and brittle. It's uh, I don't know. Has this come from an aeroplane or something? I don't know. It's quite stiff, so it's probably a Probably not a, a low grade alley, but either way it's cut it. But you know, you get the idea. It will put a nice uh, a nice shape in there and we can pass it through several times and make that shape more pronounced. Um, I've got a load of different rollers with this one and it's quite easy to make the rollers so we can get a lot of different shapes. Um, and this is meant to be okay for sort of uh, one mil, I think, one mil, uh, mild steel, so that was the alley. I mean, this this alley is really tough anyway. So um, I'll show you show you what happens with a bit of one and a half mil <laughs> mild steel. Yeah, uh, is that one and a half? Yeah, this is this is my one and a half. I've got a couple of sheets of this, a couple of big sheets of this, because um, it just seems to be a the most useful thickness. It's not. It's not so heavy that you can't do little jobs with it, and at the same time, it's heavy enough that you know it's useful for. It's useful for a number of different jobs. Yeah, but if we try and roll this, even if you only take really little bites at it, um, we end up getting a lot of flex. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this with the camera. Look, look at the structure of this. We've basically got a big, um, a big sort of C shape, yeah. So we've got a cutout all the way along the centre, um, and solid metal at the back here. It's quite thick. This one, it's thicker than others. This is the cheapest one I could find, but it's still um, what, five eight thick, sixteen mil. Um, but all that stress is sort of focused on this these two thin sections here yeah and it's not opening up it's actually going forwards and backwards um, we'll see if we can just get that on camera I need to take a thicker bite I'm not actually touching the metal there Can you see that? The uh, the tool isn't moving in the vise. It's uh, that's flex. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I'd like to have a look at, so that I can work with slightly heavy met slightly heavy metal. Um, get rid of that flex. But it'll still work. It's just it just means you know you're not quite as accurate, and um, you have to take. Have to take a lot more passes, so it's not the end of the world that flex. But there we go. It's, it's 
are still making a nice a nice profile on that bit of steel um, so it'd be nice to add a rib along the back to get rid of that this uh, this bolt's a bit pants it'd be nice not to have to use a spanner so we'll uh, we'll make something for that I actually I really don't like this <laughs> this nut essentially that's welded on here uh, it's just a bit gash um, I, I'd quite like to make something nicer <laughs> I don't even know if that needs doing it does look like it's bent or maybe it was just welded on at an angle like I say this is a cheap one um, uh, I also would like a wheel on the back rather than this handle yeah so I have a big wheel and that means because quite often you'll be um, at the front of the machine here trying to feed something through and you've got to keep your eyes on it yeah if you're doing it passing it all through without any guides or anything you've really got to keep your eye on the line here it's like putting something through a saw through a bandsaw freehand you know if you're not using any guides you've really got to stay on the ball with things um, and you can imagine if the handles handles way back here and you're trying to crank it you um, gets gets a bit tricky to uh, to maintain a, a sort of um, consistent view of things you know so we'll put a wheel on the back the most important thing I'd like to try and do uh, we're fogging up again I've been keeping my camera in a where is it in a in a, in a jar of desiccant overnight to try and stop this fogging up but it's just man it's hard life for a camera in my shed isn't it hey? uh, yeah and the last thing I want to do the most important thing so those two mods I've actually seen a few other YouTubers do them um, you know they make a lot of sense and it's great having that, that resource there what I haven't seen is the um, some sort of attachment for doing round stuff yeah and um I'd, uh, I was planning on making a load of pulleys out of sheet steel for my crane um, and I was, I was thinking along the lines of uh, stamping them, getting them a bit warm and then uh, stamping them between two lumps of steel um, and then one of you guys mentioned that I really needed hubcaps on my crane so I thought you know how would I make hubcaps I'd, I'd probably it'd be nice to do them with some sort of rotary attachment in the uh, in the Jenny uh, and I thought you know I could I could probably yeah if I'm smart about things I could probably make my pulleys like that as well um, you know pulleys made in a Jenny that'd be a that'd be cool that'd be really quick and it would save getting the metal all scummy with heat um, yeah that could work so that's what we'll do that's the most important modification that's going to happen today uh, some sort of bar that comes out with a um, with an adjustable uh, pivot on it so pivot point for the metal and we'll have to be able to turn it in a couple of you know move it in a couple of different um, planes I suppose um, yeah three things three things um, sort of uh, the handle handles a standalone modification that would be the last one the rib the reinforcement rib and the um, detachable round stuff jig uh, they could be integrated quite nicely so that's what I'm going to try and do I'll put the rib on first and then try and bring the um, bring the round stuff jig out from the uh, from the rib that I'm welding on and uh, it should all be nice and neat and sort of semi-professional looking and more importantly I'll get rid of the fog in this camera again Fucking fog. <laughs> hey, so I've got the uh, the main chassis of the uh, of the Jenny stripped down, and I cut the uh, the the um, pressure adjusting um, tab off, if you can even call it that. Just a bit of scrap welded on, wasn't it? Um, and cleaned up the back side and I've fabricated a shaped piece of steel okay? um, so this is this is nowhere near the thickness of the actual tool this is just um, 
nine or ten mil, and we've got sixteen mil here. But all, all we're doing with this, spread the world this on. All I'm doing with this is trying to uh, disperse the the focal point of the stress. You know, right? Um, stop, stop these two. Stop the line across here from being the uh, the most stressed uh, stressed part of this this piece of metal, and just just spread it elsewhere. Yeah? Okay, because we've got um, you know a, a big old chunk of metal there, and another slightly smaller chunk of metal on top, and we're we're only putting pretty you know relatively localized heat just on one side. We're um, already getting a slight bit of banana ring and uh, it's quite important with this because obviously you've got shafts running you know the length of this item um, so what I, what I figured we'd do is um, rather than rather than weld this double on properly I'll um, I'll just tack the the rest of the the rib or the, the rest of the structure to stiffen these up uh, I'll tack it all in place first and then um, then you know, when I do weld things properly, it should uh, should prevent the the worst of the warpage. Okay, so the uh, the back side of this tool is is now massively beefed up. Um, the doubler there and these struts leaving the slot free puts all the stress at the back, I suppose, where it can cope with it. Where there's you know sufficient depth of material, <laughs> it certainly gained a lot of weight. Yeah. And uh, that now we, we can get our bars on. I need to sort the tension out still. I'm just working on the on the rotary rotary work holder. Yeah, I've I've bored out a bit of steel. I need to put a clamp at the end. I didn't show the boring out. I thought you know it's going to be a bit boring, isn't it? Um, we've got a bit of a 20 mil ground round that sits very nicely in there. Woo! Uh, so I'm gonna slit it and put a put a pinching bolt in there, and this will end up getting mounted down here.
Okay! Alright, so we've got the, uh, the reinforcing on the back, the uh, holder there for the disc, disc spinning holder, work holder, if you like. I think I don't really know what to call it, you know. That's the thing with being, you know, a cutting edge edge cutter. Right, you invent stuff, so you got to name it, didn't you? Hey, eh? rotary, <laughs> rotary Jennificator. Uh, Je Jenny, no, Jenny Spinner. Je um, no, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So I want a nice, uh, a nice pressure knob um, to to put the pressure on the top roller to bring it into contact with the workpiece. Yeah, um, this is the top roller. Now, previously, uh, there's the bolt on that shitty tab. I cut that off, that's rubbish, and it just pushes down here, yeah? And this is quite a heavy bar, so when you want to take your work out, you've got to hold this up and, and jiggle your work out of there. What would be nice is, uh, obviously we need a nice a nice handle on top, but if it also raised this as well, um, which is easily done, you know, it's not, a, it's not the most difficult thing in the world to do that, it just means we have to uh, create some sort of a socket here on this um, on this bearing I suppose you'd call it um, and the socket needs to captive the, the bolt that's pressing down on it has to have a notch in the bolt and then this socket's going to have a little pin in it yeah to uh, uh, not grip the bolt but locate the bolt so that when the bolt comes up it raises this as well as the bolt being able to push it down yeah all right cool Okay, so we've got the uh, the roller support. This is the uh, the sliding roller support, and this is the one that you can alter the pressure on the on the rollers with. Um, you saw me making the bolt. Um, you didn't see me put a thread on it. Uh, I did another video. Link up there, I guess, or there or there or somewhere. Uh, I had to I had to make myself a big uh, big die holder. So that was. Um, Use that to put the thread on here. Uh, this lovely big die holder, as it happens. Uh, hopefully, most of you recognise it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, also, also took a bit, a bit of thirty mil, thirty mil round, and bored and tapped that. So that can act as a nut now. Yep. Yeah, so this is going to get mounted up here. And there's a little upstand somewhere, where have you got to? Here. So that's just going to space it all off the uh, off the chassis. And hopefully I'll be able to get it welded up reasonably square in that position there. Give me a minute. Okay. Look at this hideous beast then. <laughs> it's got a phone call. No, that's a fella, that's a musician, isn't it? It's, um, either way, um, not looking that pretty at the minute, 
but um, but it, it is coming together, believe me. So we've got the uh, the um, the roller pressure adjust here, and as you can see, it now raises the um, raises the roller as well as applying pressure, which is which is excellent. That's a going to be a massive improvement, make it a lot easier to use. Um, I'm, I'm going to finish off this this bolt. It's going to get a nice bar and a windy handle on top. And we'll make a couple more bolts for the um, for the roundification device. Um, the only last big thing I, I want to do is uh, make a new new handle for the um, you know to to actually turn the boulders. Um, I want to make a wheel really. So um, if you remember my my dump truck, I'm sure you'll remember my dump truck. If you don't, again. I'm going to start trying to do more links because, you know, why not? I should be doing it. I should be. I should stay on top of these things. Yeah, but either way, link link up here for the dump truck build series. Um, but don't click off this video, you know. This will be great. <laughs> um, just, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the rim of a wheelchair and um, exactly like I did on the steering wheel of that dump truck. That's what I was trying to say. Sorry, I'm you know, losing train of thought. I was too busy thinking about other things, I suppose. Um, so we're going to use the steering wheel, the, um, not the steering wheel of a wheelchair, the, the hand hand rim. Yeah, I've got it over here actually. The, uh, the handy handy rim bit on the from a wheelchair wheel, and make make some spokes up, and use this to actually drive the bead roller. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't that heavy actually. This is just a uh, this is just pipe tube, whatever the tubular. Got to be reasonably light for wheelchair. Haven't they um, might have been nice if I had solid steel, but to be honest, this is getting to the point where uh, it's not a struggle to lift up. But oh, <laughs> you certainly know you're lifting it up. You know there is some uh, there is some gravity attaching itself to this this machine. Okay, so. Let's do that wheel and then um, it's just a couple of fasteners really. Okay, <laughs> all right, folks. So we've got it. Um, we got it pretty much mock assembled back up. Um, I'm I'm pretty happy with everything that's happened so far. Um, all the major mods to the to the frame itself are done. So this can take a bit of paint now, and it's it's getting pretty cold here in my shed. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this painted. Um, I, I want to make it nice, so I'm going to hit it with filler primer, rub it down, filler prime, rub fill, uh, and probably take it into the house and stick it in front of the fire tonight. Uh, but the uh, the wheel came out beautifully. This is so much going to be so much easier to use, you know. Um, there's a bit of metal, uh, you know. No, um, no giving it the reach around, you know. That's 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 lovely. Very happy with that. Uh, this is gonna. I've only got a matchstick in here in place of the roll pin at the minute because I didn't want to waste a roll pin because uh, it's all got to come apart again. But it does does raise it up. Because the problem before was you'd have to get your fingers in here and hold it up whilst you're sliding the metal in, and then uh, and then you know you'd almost certainly jam the jam the corner of the metal into your knuckles. Which oh, yeah, there's worse things in the world, isn't there? But you know it's not great. So we're gonna get some paint on this. I won't bother showing you that because it's just painting. Painting's a bit boring, isn't it?